What's up, everyone? This is Anthony Gallegos from IGN alongside Sergey Titov, uh, executive producer on The War Z. And, Hi, guys. And we're here to we're here to tell you about this upcoming zombie survival game. So, Sergey, uh, what's kind of the 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 elevator pitch for The War Z? What is the the high level concept behind it? Uh, think of War Z is uh, kind of mix of uh, several genres combined in one game. So it's if we are talking about like zombie games in general so think of mix of left for dead dead island kind of daisy mod and uh minecraft okay minecraft is not exactly a zombie game but uh that's feels there are zombies in minecraft yeah there are zombies in minecraft so, um, uh, and that's kind of uh war z is a mix of all of those uh so you have kind of three pillars of the gameplay for war z one is survival in the world exploration so very so get into the world and explore the world right which that. is what we're kind of here yeah this that's like... basically what we are doing right now uh the second pillar is social interaction between players and how they collaborate and work in the world together and the uh, third one is more like what we call the rebuilding society after zombie apocalypses and uh basically people uh and players working on uh, building new society and uh Whatever it will be, it may be like good, bad, and ugly. So we don't, we don't know how it will turn out. So when you drop into the world of the War Z, uh, you kind of are. It, I, it, it takes place in Colorado. The, this first map that you guys are releasing with. It's uh, we called it internally Colorado, but it's obviously it's not like uh, it's, it, it's, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's an interpretation. Hundred, yeah, um, uh, it, it's a world. Yeah. So that's our first map. We have more maps in the works, but that's first one. And uh, you basically drop in, into the world and you don't know how world works. You don't know what the world mechanics are. And uh, you start exploring and basically trying to find out uh, like all, all things about the world, all and, things about zombies. And so a big part of the, the sort of what kind of makes, you know, the mechanics behind the War Z is that, is that on top of, besides fighting zombies, you're also having to kind of stave off things like starvation, uh, yes. you know, dehydration. Um, also, yeah. I, I take it there's like a you know there's like medical needs, which is why you have bandages. Yeah, um, painkillers like that, those. <laughs> uh, yes, you have to maintain your health, uh, and uh, you have your food level and water level. It's uh, on left lower corner, and basically, as you go through the world, you obviously get dehydrated. You you become hungry, so you, you should keep keep looking for those. Uh, also, you have your general health and your let's say, health bar and health level. Uh, if you got hit, it goes down. If you got infected by zombies, it can go down as well. So so the world that we're seeing before us, uh, how big is the, the world, the initial map of the War Z? Uh, so initial map is about uh, 160 square kilometers. Yeah, that's about uh, 60 to 70 square miles. Okay. Uh, so that's about your size and... Uh, the, the vast majority of the world knows kilometers. It's yeah, just, so, it's just, it's just yeah, us dummies yeah. who don't. Um, so, I, you know, obviously there's a day-night cycle to what's going on. Um, yeah, right now, so we are kind of like it's uh, dawn of new day. And uh, our day-night cycle is uh, around four to five hours of real world. So basically, if you're playing the game for like eight hours straight, <laughs> you'll get like a couple days in the game. So where do the zombies in the game tend to spawn? Do they tend to spawn around like areas that are necessary, like, you know, for supplies? Or like, how do you encourage players to engage with zombies? Uh, so, so basically, like, it's like in real life. Okay, I said real life, but in real life, we don't have zombies. Thanks God, yet. Uh, but uh, zombies... <laughs> Zombies are spawned where people lived, and uh, because zombies are not exactly like uh, some outer world creatures, they are just people who lived there and then they got infected, they became zombies. So, so that's cities, uh, single houses and everything, and uh, obviously you will find supplies where they belong, so it's general stores or other people's houses, or maybe even some, uh, so for example, uh, we are approaching town right now where there is small church that was used by survivors to kind of barricade and build their own base there. So I hope there is some supplies there and uh, we'll find it out. But uh, first thing you want to do uh, when you are approaching city, you want to kind of look and uh, try to... 
kind of scout uh, out, scout and see yeah, what's around. Yeah, sc scout, see what's going on, and what kind of zombies you're probably uh, going to encounter there, because it it gives you a lot of information when you're looking at the zombies. Uh, some move faster, some move slower, uh, some just stand still, and uh, by observing how many s mo fast or slower moving moving zombies there you can kind of like say okay is a dangerous place for me to go or not sure uh, i think this place uh, okay we'll see how it goes it's there's a lot of them down there yeah <laughs> and, and so the zombies as far as how they detect you that's what's up on the upper right hand corner of the screen that's yes that's uh so you guys take account of sight and sound and uh but i think i've I remember hearing that it's a uh, sound that is yeah, the primary it's, yeah, way yeah, to it's detect mostly, you. Yeah, it's mostly sound because uh, zombies probably like uh, their vision is degraded, sure. uh, so they can see very well. And smell is only working for about like uh, twenty feet away, so uh, so so it's mostly will be uh, sound. And okay, so I can go like that. I need to put silencer, and uh, I need some <laughs> better stuff. Too. You're a pretty well equipped zombie survivor. Yes, uh, I am developer, so <laughs> it's 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 like only way for me to go right now, like almost all guns blazing and like uh, to into the city because in, un, under normal condition players will probably won't be able to find well equipped gun like sure, that. Sure, the, the type of player that would have the kind of equipment that you have. This is someone that's put in a lot of time and done a lot of exploring and done really well for themselves it, it's a lot of time like really <laughs> a lot because uh weapons are rare uh ammo is even more rare and uh, attachments for weapons are really 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 rare but players so but players will all start with a flashlight right which they can use as a rudimentary rudimentary weapon if they have to yes uh flashlight is actually quite usable uh melee weapon so i'll try to let me show you i'll try to get closer to that dude from behind. Oh. And I'm trying to to hit her in the head because only way to kill zombies in our game are headshots or blunt trauma to, to the head. Yeah, so you can use your flashlight. It's not ideal. I mean, obviously, you're putting yourself in melee range of the zombies, which is what you basically never want to happen. But Yeah. Um, so, as far as, uh, you know, the biggest, the bigger threat, though, I mean, obviously zombies are a, a big threat in the world, but War Z is a multiplayer game, so you, the big player interaction is obviously something that you guys want to drive as well, right? Yes, and uh, for that, it just, like, obviously, you will have encounters with players, and some players will be, like, uh, douchebags, so to say, and start killing you. <laughs> uh, some people will try to help you, but uh, we'll... We just created several tools to encourage people to work together. Uh, one of that tools is what we call the user-created missions. So basically in the game, uh, let me just uh, run away. So in the game, uh, there are no uh, NPCs or NPCs uh, created oh. missions. Yeah. So there are no quests that we created as developers or anything. So all quests that exist in the world are created by players. And uh, players basically can create Sorry, I'm putting some yeah, I was barricade. Say you can, you can yeah, also so create barricades. Saved, uh, so you'll be safe there. So uh, players can create quests for other players, and uh, they can. We have some uh, we have some goals for missions that are predefined, and basically you can select from uh, from the list of kind of missions we we pre created. Like, okay, help me to kill. 10 zombies or bring me that items or I won't put a bounty on the head of this guy so he he, he killed me once. So if there's a player that's being really mean to you, you yeah, can strike yeah, back yeah, against yeah, him. Yeah, or you can create a free defined, what we call free defined missions and that's basically you can put whatever you want as mission goal you can say, oh I need a shrink to talk for half an hour <laughs> and, you can, and you can put whatever rewards you want and uh, those missions are real test for Oh, how he get ten? Uh, real test for uh, trust between players. Yeah, I was gonna say it's on the honor system at that. Yeah, point. yeah, because because basically. Uh, I mean, I will take this time to note that everything that everyone's seeing, this is a pre-alpha. Yeah, build it's pre-alpha of build. the War Z. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that you guys are planning on doing 
you know, you don't even have a firm uh, release date for sure, like a wide release date, because you, I, from what I understand yeah. is October is a target that you guys want to start letting in a small group of people and then grow it out from there. Yeah. We are targeting for October for, uh, let's say, mid, mid of October for start our kind of first public access to the game. And then from... Uh, and then as far as pricing goes, uh, the plan is to have the War Z release as like a $30 standalone game. And that's it. No more, you get free content after that. Any, any content updates, that's it. Yes. It's basically like one-time fee, you're paying uh, 30 bucks. And uh, if you get into the beta, we probably will give you a discount for that. Sure. Uh, and after that, all updates, all new maps, and uh, everything is basically uh, free for you. So you don't have to spend a cent on playing the game. Though you guys do support the game uh, to a, to or have plans to support the game to some degree through uh, optional microtransactions as well. Yes, you basically can uh, uh, spend the money to buy uh, one of the kind of three in-game currencies, uh -huh. and you can spend cash to buy that. Uh, but uh, from what I understand, everything is acquirable in the world. Yes, yes. So, so, so basically, you think about that like uh, this way. Uh, you can go into the world and find the items. Or you can uh, go into the market, what we call marketplace, and buy certain items. Not all items, by the way. For example, you can't buy weapons. Yeah, and those, you, you, those yeah, you have to earn. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy uh, guns attachments. You can't buy most of the ammo. Uh, but certain things you, you obviously can buy. And uh, those things, when you buy them, it's basically like a, a trade-off be uh, between... Do I want to go and spend one hour, half an hour tr trying to find this item? Or do I want to just spend uh, yeah. 50 cents, 70 cents and buy this item in a, in a store? Sure. And also, I remember one thing that, that I heard you tell me before that sounded cool is that the, uh, the in-game quests that players can assign, they can do that for the... For the the currency money as well, correct? So they can, yes. they can, you know, you can do the in-game currency, you can do the the transaction currency. Like, yes. it's up to the players. Yeah, to it's, kind of set it, the it's completely up to the players. We kind of, we kind of saying, okay, there is kind sort of uh, a game economy in a, uh, a game, econ like just economy in a game. Uh, we have gold as universal like uh, currency. Sure. We have dollars, which are kind of like. There is huge inflation, obviously, so you need lots of them. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we don't enforce that on players. So we're saying, okay, that's common denominators in the game, but you can use whatever you want for to pay uh, to pay for, for stuff in the game. Um, what about as far as uh, the the like light RPG elements that you guys are doing in the games, like being able to? Because I know that one of the things that kind of sets us apart from its competition is that. Uh, Unless you're playing on hardcore mode, your player doesn't necessarily, your character doesn't necessarily permanently die, and and that's important because the character that you're you're working on, they will level up as they kill zombies, and then they can use those the experience they gain to to kind of augment their natural abilities, right? Yeah, it's it's not exactly a level up; it's more like gaining experience, and you can uh, spend those experience points on training, and basically we call it skill tree, but it's effectively not the skill three as you got used, for example, in uh, World of Warcraft or, sure. or any other RPGs. Uh, there is no superhuman powers or anything, so you can't... So you're get, not going to uh, cast a fireball. Y yeah. You, no, you ju not just that. You can just learn the skill plus 10 to damage of your weapon but skills are more like natural training like for example we have physical training tree uh, that lets you uh, carry more weight and, or maybe uh, sprint longer you can see sprint, the, the uh, yeah, sp uh, sprint longer or for gun proficiency training that let you uh, reload slightly faster uh, but at the end uh, I mean uh, guy the hatchet can kill guy who like maxed out on skill trees, they just like a couple blows and they can take his stuff. Yeah, it's uh, so, so it's not creating like superhuman or any huge advantage uh, like uh, when fighting other players. So, but when you die on normal mode, uh, you know, like what's what are the ways that you guys are experimenting with as as far as making death meaningful? You know, when they get to respawn. Oh, couple things. It's uh, number one. It's basically. Uh, big, biggest thing is when you die in normal mode your character became locked out for a certain period of time and uh, right now we kind of uh, experimenting between one day or two days in real world 
Uh, so you won't be able just to play this character for, for that period of time. Sure. You still have five slots. Sure. So you can create five characters, but okay, if you like this guy, if he's experienced enough. You could always delete a character too and make room for a new one, but yeah, yeah. you lose the skills, yeah, the, point, exactly. the experience that you've gained. Um, Plus you lose like uh, all of your perks like leaderboard position and everything. So after the initial uh, release, you know, that you guys are doing in October for with a limited release, what are the things that you guys kind of want to work on that you, like, where you see War Z, like, evolving towards? Uh, we... I know you have to equip things. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> Probably the next uh, biggest thing that uh, is already kind of in, in the testing, but we will uh, release it shortly after uh, first public release is what like kind of mode uh i wouldn't call it even mode it's more like a feature we don't have formal name for it but we called it uh for now stronghold or my worlds mm -hmm. and uh that's uh basically ability for you to create your own small instant world on different much smaller maps so it's not this one huge map it's much smaller maps that around like four square kilometers right. in size and uh, those maps ranges from uh wide variety of environments like standing, uh, starting of like simple things like cabin in the woods or a single house farm and up to the small town and what you do in those worlds are completely different it's 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 like it's up to you what you do in that it's right. like uh, we, we we don't we don't enforce whatever why you need that uh and that's good thing to create really cool emergent gameplay as i explained uh, explained before we had like guys who sent us email and said oh can you get alpha access account for my wife and we asked like uh, uh why and he's like oh yeah i'm playing farmville in war z and we're like what do you mean you play in farmville she's like yeah my wife uh huge farmville player she, she she's playing farmville too and i'm playing farmville too right now and um I, I try to recreate that experience in War, War Z. So uh, we have item that basically looks like a crate that allows you to uh, grow vegetables. So you need, you, you need to pour water and everything. So guy is literally, literally build a big farm. So basically you can use these, these smaller worlds as kind of sanctuaries away from the, the public areas and kind of to a limited degree, do what you want with it. Exactly. You know, and, and use it as like a, a storehouse for all your gear. And, exactly. Um, so outside of that, though, I know that, uh, you know, you guys created this big open world, but, and, you know, you can have, I know you guys are trying to sort it between like 70 and 100 players to a server, but then the, uh, you, you're also going to have the option for players to, uh, to rent their own servers and kind of run their own private worlds if they want, if they just want to play with their friends, yes. for instance. Uh, yes, for example, uh, you can run, as I said, smaller worlds, or you can just create your own server, same way you do in any other game like Battlefield uh, or any other, like Daisy, for example, too. Yeah. But uh, unlike uh, most of those services, you don't need to create your own. So basically, you don't need to go to services like game servers or i3d or something and create account enter your credit card, create a server, configure that. We have a uh, server rental interface built into the game. So from the game menu, you will be able to rent as many services as you so want. So it's, it's a lot more user-friendly. Yeah, it's, more, are yeah it's, it. it's much more easier for user. As far as pricing and that goes, the, all that stuff's still being worked out. Yeah. Um, well, did you have anything else that you wanted to kind of hit upon? I think we hit upon a lot of the major points of what you guys are doing with the War Z. Yeah, I, I, yeah well, I only want to say thanks for all of our community we had like uh, really really good community that really involved in the game and uh, they basically uh, they basically are driving force they driving force for whatever we are doing and we, we think that when we release the game when we launch the game that's basically for us not just okay we made a product wrap up sell it oh cool profit no for us it's just start of long road together with our fans and our players and our community to make a game to make a game that they want to play. So that's kind of a, a brief overview, overview of the War Z. Uh, just as a reminder, what you're seeing here, this is all, uh, all pre-alpha gameplay. So, you know, there's non-final animations, not final sounds. All that's still being worked on very lovingly by Sergey and his team. Uh, and for a lot more on the War Z, you can keep it locked to IGN. <laughs>